Welcome to our Understanding Market Size Supply vs. Demand training video. This presentation is broken down into introduction, auction format, and fixed price format. Let's proceed with the introduction. Understanding the market opportunity for a given product is extremely important for an eBay business. Every single product on the eBay platform operates on a market economy or in other words, under the laws of economics. Looking at the supply graph, you can see on the x-axis there's quantity and on the y-axis there's price. You can see that as the merchant is able to get a higher price, he's willing to put more and more quantity out in the market. So therefore, you'll see the supply graph is on a positive incline. So if we wanted to give a more detailed example that means that more and more competition is willing to enter the marketplace with a given higher price. On the flip side you'll see the demand graph same thing. We'll see price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. So the graph is on a decline. The higher the price the less people will consume or the less people will purchase. So let's give a real example. Over the past couple years, gas prices has been spiking upwards. So that means the higher the price of gasoline, the less the drivers will drive or the less people will consume of gasoline. So you move to the next slide, you'll see that the market is at an equilibrium in price and quantity where supply meets demand. Or in other words, a price and quantity where suppliers are happy with the profit and buyers are happy with their purchases. Using TerraPeak, we can view historical stats to see where the market equilibrium is set for a given product. Furthermore, by doing this, we can estimate where price, sell-through rates, and quantity will go should we decide to add additional supply to the market by uploading listings onto eBay. It is important to note that we must treat our auctions and fixed price listings separately as the buyer base may not completely overlap. Let's proceed with the auction format section. When we look at the eBay auction format, it is important to note that auctions support one single quantity in its listing and that auctions generally range from one day to ten day listing durations. In other words, they are live for a limited period of time. Knowing this, we can use TerraPeak to understand how supply and demand works for auction listings and therefore we can control our listing volumes to maximize sales and profit. Let's now take a look at a real example. Plastic poker cards. Let's go to the TerraPeak software and then enter in plastic poker cards in the search field. These are premium poker cards that you could gamble with friends on a Saturday night. It is important to confirm that your product is similar to the ones that are currently displaying under this search result in order to compare apples to apples. For example, you cannot assume to sell low quality cardboard cards at $17 each when your competition is selling high quality plastic cards at the same price. But for the purposes of this exercise, let's assume that we're selling the exact same product to save time. Let's look at more details. Again, the cards sell at about $17 on average with a sell-through rate of 51.26%. However, because we're talking specifically about auction listings in this section, let's go ahead and go to the left side and add a filter criteria for auctions only. TerraPeak will now start generating a product report for auction listings only. And you can see that 
the results are different. Now we have an average price of $21 and a sell-through rate of approximately 45%. If you scroll down to the day of the week widget, we can roughly guess that um, on average every day there's about 30 listings hopping onto the market and they're selling through at about 45%. Based upon these numbers, this is a pretty healthy market. And let's assume that we want to enter the market. While it would be great if consumers continue to purchase at this exact same price, no matter how much supply we add to the market, this scenario is rarely true. If we go back and refer to the demand graph, as more quantity comes onto the market, the price will begin to drop, thus a declining graph. Furthermore, sell-through rates may begin to drop as well, as your ads become less appealing because there's just too much supply. Therefore, the key driver to deciding how much supply to add to the market is profitability. How much will you profit by adding X amount of supply to the market? Let's first understand our cost structure based on the current market equilibrium using a basic eBay fee calculator. Before we go to the calculator, let's start by remembering some of the statistics that were um, displayed on TerraPeak, such as the average price, sell-through percentage, etc. So if we look at the basic eBay fee calculator, which we created, let's enter in the assumptions according to TerraPeak. For example, for these deck of cards, you'll see a price of $21.39 on average. And a product cost, let's just assume our product cost is about $10. And based upon this end price, let's assume the insertion fee is about $0.50 cents to list a $20 item on eBay. And our final value fee is at a 9% clip. Our PayPal fee is at 3.9% and plus $0.30 cents per item transaction. And let's assume that we have no listing upgrades such as subtitles, bold, or etc. Shipping price is at five sixty six, but again, let's assume we don't make money off of shipping prices. And sell-through rate is at 45.2%. So based upon these assumptions, we know that our current profitability is about $7 an item. How do we calculate this? Based upon the price, we sub subtract our product cost, and then we have an eBay fee calculator, which subtracts the platform fees, including insertion fees, final value fees, listing upgrade fees, and PayPal fees. So again, we make about $7 per item sold, and we profit at approximately 32.7% gross margins. In this particular scenario, I have a good profit margin at 32.7%, which can serve as a cushion for any potential decrease in price or sell-through rate as a result of me adding supply to the market. This exercise will require you to make assumptions on risk. It's not an exact science, nor is there an exact answer. Again, we must make assumptions on risks, implement these assumptions, and then test them out in the real market. I'm now going to give you several examples of how we create assumptions, choose the best assumption to execute, and then validate our assumptions. First, we know that the market equilibrium of the number of auction listings being uploaded to the eBay platform sits at about 30 listings per day. You can see on the day of the week widget, from Sunday through Saturday, we can estimate approximately 30 listings being uploaded. So now let's start to make our assumption. Let's assume that we wanted to upload 30 listings of our own. So that will bring the total up to about 60 listings um, active on eBay at any given time. Based on our previous demand model, we know that because of additional supply, prices and sell-through rates will drop. It's now important for us to make assumptions on how much prices and sell-through rates will drop. 
let's go back to the eBay fee calculation table and let's make several assumptions. First of all, prices will drop. So previously, we'll see that market equilibrium says that an average poker plastic card will sell for $21.39. And now let's assume that price will drop by 10%. So that will bring prices down to $19.25. And we also know that sell-through rates will drop. So originally, we were sitting at 45.2%. And let's just say that we assume that sell-through rates will drop to 35%. So based upon these assumptions, we can already guesstimate what our profitability will look like. So here, you can see that the profit per item will drop to $4.82 and the profit margin will drop to 25%. And therefore, we can understand based upon different scenarios where our profit margins will lie. And furthermore, we can also look at what our total profit would be. So if we listed, let's just say 30 listings, and we expect them to convert at 35%, when we scroll down, you can see that an estimate of about 10.5 quantity will sell, or you will make about a total of $50.59, assuming that 35% of your listings convert, and you make an average of $4.82 per sold item. On the other hand, let's make another supply and demand scenario. Let's assume that you didn't want to add so much supply on the marketplace because you're very conservative and you're worried about price drops and therefore profitability drops. So now let's assume that instead of listing 30 listings, we're going to cut it to 15 listings. And because of this, instead of 10% price drop, you're only going to experience a 5% price drop. So now the selling price would be $20.32. And also, instead of such a dramatic drop in sell-through percentage, we're going to assume that because we only listed half of the previous scenario, the sell-through will only dip by half too, from 45% all the way down to, let's just say, 40%. So here, you can see that running this through our calculation table, we can see our cost structure is different now. And our profitability situation is different as well. You can see that now, our total cost is only $14.39 because the sell-through percentage is higher. And therefore, our profit per item has gone up dramatically to $5.93. And our profit margin has grown from 25% to 29.2%. However, on the reverse side, because we're only listing 15 listings, our sold quantity dips from 10 sold quantity down to 6. So our total profit is only $35 versus the previous $50. The total profit is actually what we care about the most. At the end of the day, how much money do we rake in? So based upon these two scenarios, it's obvious that we would select the previous scenario, scenario A, which is listing 30 listings on the market, assuming that our product cost is only $10, because this will garner the most profit for you. We strongly recommend that you run your data through Terapeak, either on a daily or weekly basis to test the accuracy of your assumptions. Sometimes your assumptions might not turn out to be reality, and if the reality statistics, the real statistics, deviate too much from your assumptions. We hope that you can adjust your listing volume accordingly in order to maximize your profit. So again, when we go back to the presentation, to wrap things up with auctions, again, we recommend a three-step process. One, make assumptions on how additional supply will affect price and sell-through percentage. Two, choose a scenario that generates the most profit. And three, 
track results using Terapeak and make adjustments accordingly.